Today I'm showing you all the things I normally cut out of these videos. Let's have a little behind the scenes. Welcome to a new video on the Create World. Today I'm thinking about doing some upgrades to some builds and farms we've built in previous episodes. Normally I would cut these out of the videos because I feel like it's reusing old content, but today I want to take you guys with me. The first farm that we're upgrading is the Drown Farm, again. I've been thinking of changing the zombie spawners into drowned ones ever since I installed Apotheosis. That way we can cut back on the time between spawning and processing of the subjects. The first thing we need to do is acquire some drowned eggs. So I'll be here for a while after mowing down drowned. Apparently drowned that come from zombie conversion drop zombie eggs, not drowned eggs. So let's go hunting for some wild ones. A couple of hours and a lot of drowned later, we have three eggs that we can use for the farm. I think I should be able to just convert them by clicking on the spawner with the egg. And I've been watching them for a while, but they don't seem to be spawning yet. I think it might be because they need water to spawn, so let's fill up the room with some H2O. And that also doesn't seem to work. There is this spawner upgrade that ignores all spawn requirements, but that requires a dragon egg. So I might look into adding a mod that allows me to get an egg for every dragon that I kill. I'm hunting ghasts at the moment because I want to make ender crystals. In between takes, I added the more dragon eggs mod. So I need to respawn the dragon a few times. It should be easy enough though, so let me craft these crystals and I'll meet you guys in the end. Alright, let's do this. If I think back to the first dragon fight, we should be smashing through these as if it's nothing. So, yeah, that is one, two, three dragons on the board and three dragon eggs in my inventory. Back at the farm, we can click on the spawners with the dragon egg and it should now start spawning mobs. It seems to be doing okay for now. I'll go run the drill for a bit in the deep slate mines because I'm, well, running out of deep slate at the moment and I also could use a bit more diamonds for some gear upgrades. During the mining process I suddenly thought I should convert the slime farm to a spawner based design as well, so I started hunting for some slime eggs as well. This conversion is going to be a bit more simple as you can just put a random spawner three blocks high on every platform. We make sure that we change it to a slime spawner with an egg and hit it with a nether star and a comparator. That way it'll keep spawning but we can still turn it off with a redstone link. At the top of the farm where the processing of the goods happens we can just add a little and gate that checks for both the backlog of slime balls and obsidian and will turn off the spawners when we're full on everything. Enough for the techie stuff, we need to take care of some hidden ugly spots. We need to finish up some of the wall trims in the warehouse, which is a small task, but I've been putting it off for a while. The forklift tunnels also need an upgrade. We'll use mostly stone bricks, but I want to blend in some tough as well, as the roof is made of tough bricks. Now let's see how long it takes me to finish these up.
The tunnel is done. It's pretty simple, but it'll do the job. I also had to take a look at the diorite slash andesite farm because we're going to take out the hoppers that feed the cobblestone into the crafters. They keep backing up and breaking the farm and yeah, I run out of andesite once in a while. I'll replace them with a mechanical arm to feed it one by one and hopefully that will not break anymore. On another note, you might have noticed some hitches or frame drops in this video and no, it's not your internet speed or the video quality. It's my computer not liking the mod pack. It's been struggling for this entire recording session. Like right now I'm hitting an average of 32 FPS and that's on the high end. I had a moment in the tunnel where it was constant 10 FPS or lower. If you know how to fix it or if there's a way to make it better, let me know in the comments below. But that'll end it right here for me today. If you liked it, hit that subscribe button, like the video, it helps out a lot, and I'll see you guys next week. Bye!